We are part of creating a society of healthy, empowered, and fulfilled individuals. My name is Madeleine Mufiad, and I'm here to bring you Perspective. Hi, and welcome, Kyle Sees, to the Perspective podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so happy to be with you tonight. Uh, or today if they're watching it or this morning depends on when they it (laughs) happens to be night here yeah i i newly waked up here so it depends on where we are in the world right Right. um it's it's so beautiful to have you here kyle it's my absolute honor it feels so so exciting truly so beautiful to see you oh thank you Mm. and same there Mm, so happy to hear that um, and I'm, I'm curious before we do anything at all um, I would like to check in with you today how how are you how is your heart doing today Kyle what a great start question you know you know a lot of things that do interviews they want to know how everything got started which is nice you know I even asked you that for you before we started yeah. you know, but... <laughs> But there's so much you're feeling now, and that's really the only thing there is, right? So let's see, how am I feeling today? I am in the middle of, you know, I'm always in the middle of some of the most magical slash a little bit painful transformations in my life, you know? Um, Today, I am playing with a really amazing idea that 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 seems to be really putting me in my heart and in my body. And the idea is, um, that I see a pattern that I've had that put an expectation on people to be proud of me, right? Or to to be impressed with something, right? So there'd be some times where I'd show someone a revelation I had or something awesome that I made or something and wanting them to be like, whoa, or excited about it. And I realized that's really a not a fair default setting for someone else or even for me to put on them. And so I'm just kind of surrendering today uh, the idea that anyone needs to be proud of me or anyone needs to be anything, you know, I'm, I'm, if someone is, that's great. But in my own body, the expectation of that isn't fair to anyone. And so it's been this really nice thing where I just am watching that fall and there's like sadness and it brings up stuff with mom and everything, but there's also a lot of oneness and a lot of now and a lot of here and a lot of freedom in that idea the idea that nobody has to be proud of me and um you know if they are that's a nice bonus but it doesn't need to be expected inside of me so you know it's it's definitely something that i'm sure could be a video but it's you know i'm living this and learning every day and following what it says so today i got a combination of more freedom with a little bit of heart pain because the old story needs people to be proud, you know? Mm. So, so a little bit achy and a little more powerful and a little more here and more present is what I'm feeling. Mm. That's beautiful. It's so, yeah. it's, it's beautiful that you're sharing because it also resonates with something within me that I've been feeling like leading up to this interview, how you're like, I told you before we press play here that this like this meeting for me it means so much not in a I don't think it has so much to do with like the fact that I'm like oh I'm meeting Kyle C's while you're this name people know about you know all of these things that you now shared like people know you because they're inspired by you and they're proud of you and all of these things um and mm-hmm. but I think for me it's it's a pr- for me to sit here with you is a proof of alignment within my own life within my own system um because once in a while i i i yeah i i met you well through youtube through your content through your perspectives online and it truly shifted something within me um and then leading up to this conversation i also felt this coming up within me this idea that or this pattern of like wanting this to go somewhere specific or i need to Mm. make this come through or this has to happen or and then this morning when I woke up I just felt this shift within me and I felt this sense of peace of like what if nothing really has to happen what if nothing really has to come through but what if I just trust that everything that will is supposed to come through will come through um and so I'm in this moment I'm feeling a a lot of trust and I feel safe and yeah it's so beautiful to sit here with you 
And, and even when you let go of your expectations or hopes or that it needs to be a certain way, it's always replaced by something. And what it's replaced by is more God coming through or more the universe just, because it's not like we won't know how to talk if we exactly. don't have expectations. It's not like we will just start pouring water on our heads. Like we'll, we'll, we'll start and things will still happen. And everything that you've ever done amazing often didn't have those expectations, like a conversation at dinner didn't have a whole bunch of planned stuff and it has to go perfectly. And the more it doesn't have to go perfectly, the better it goes. And the more it has to go perfectly, the more weak. It's our five-year-old us trying to control it, right? The more we try to make something perfect, it's a little child going, it has to be perfect because if it's not, then I'm not enough or I'm unworthy or I'm unloved. And, you know, we're moving to new territory where you're allowed to be unloved, meaning like, you're even loved if you're under the illusion you're unloved. Mm. And so then now, then from there, it's just the universe talking to itself, you know, yeah. Yeah. and so much more can happen. So beautiful. Yeah. Would you, I, I mean, something that I'm curious to talk about with you is your idea on expansion. And so I'm curious yeah. to hear from your perspective, perspective right now in your life, could you give us an example of what feels expansive to you right now? Well, it, it it seems like the now, even though it's only now and it doesn't even have a future, it seems to in some way always be expanding. In other words, so we as people, like even at the basic levels, like you understand, you learn as you go with everything, right? You, when you're a kid, if you put your hand on the stove, it's hot and you pull your hand back and you learn. Now you're you're more aware a little bit right there. Don't put your hand there, right? Well, that goes way past just the physical body. That goes to you starting to expand to a place where no matter what I do, I'm I'm learning from everything I'm doing. And life is kind of a, a much more advanced version of that don't put your hand on the stove thing. And you start to learn that one thing I've learned is that there is a a higher you that I made as a, as a video recently, that that higher you is actually you, right? In other words, we hear people talk about their guides are telling them, or my higher you says, which is beautiful. But often when we do that, we're implying that I'm the lower you, that I'm just this kind of energy that's stuck in the mud, that's following some magical guides and they're magical and I'm not. And that, that lower you can't be you because those are patterns that you often call I, like I'm a warrior, or I have these problems, but they can change and you'll still be here. So there's no way you're the lower you. So the more you do this work, you start to realize there is this higher you that's working more and more on bringing you to the truth of what you are. And what I believe we think we are is usually in most cases, a bunch of patterns that we develop to protect ourselves as children. So when you're five years old, if your dad yells at you for something, it scares your little body and you don't know what to do. So you create an alternate identity that achieves like crazy so it doesn't get scared again. And as we keep evolving, as we keep expanding, you start to see that's not me. That's a pattern that that me that achieves a bunch out of fear that that me that's scared of failing, whatever. That's not me. And the more you're kind of just in the now, the more you can see these patterns aren't you and everything you've called you was actually a protective mechanism designed to keep you fed with these parents who have really big egos because they're from a longer time ago. And I don't mean it with judgment, but so the more we do this work, the more we kind of get more and more here and see that, man, all those characters I thought I was, I'm not. But then when they're kind of purged, like you start to become more than now and you purge those identities, they seem to be replaced more and more with just miraculous things. They're they're replaced more with miracles and freedom and synchronicities and everything you've ever, it's even better than everything you've ever wanted because even that's small. And, and so you are this expanding being. And I believe very much the universe is always expanding and that, and I believe that's you. And the more you get aware, the more you let go of these small self things based on how you move and you start to realize you're just infinite opportunity. And people that are watching this, that are people that have had some sort of awakening, I find that as they get older, life gets better and better, right? And if you don't have that awakening, it gets you, you think you're more the small story. So 
you kind of become more addictions and more smaller things. And, you know, these patterns start to kind of go down and you're going down with them. And I really believe that we live in a time where the universe or God or whatever you want to call it is trying really hard to remove the false us's. And it's painful because we're identified with it, but you, it's very hard to move forward without the false you kind of being removed. Um, you know, and there's ways that we try to cover that up by being more addicted or trying to achieve something out of force or whatever. And it's, and we're in a time where it doesn't work. Like it's, it's very hard for a lot of people to maintain relationships. It's very hard for people to like come up with a project and stick with it because right now we're all like on the operating table and the universe is removing what we're not. Mm. So it's, it's a really exciting time if you get what's happening and it's a horrifying time if you don't. Yeah. If you get what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's, if you yeah. understand what's happening, mm. you're, you can move with it, yeah. but if you don't, and you think you're the small story that keeps trying to use force to do things in a time when you can't, this is where people are getting in more pain and more depressed. So getting more, becoming more than now and letting what you're not be pulled out of you is a much more expansive freeing thing than staying the small thing that it's trying to remove. Mm. Right. So, yeah. I don't mm. know if that makes sense. Yeah. It makes total sense. And I'm curious to hear to like catch up with the listeners who doesn't really know you as well as I do from your content that I've consumed for sure. a couple of years back. Um, well, I'm not going to ask you the question that we were into in the beginning, like how it started, but it's something that I am curious about is because you're inspiring a lot of people with your work doing this work that you're that you're doing and I'm curious to hear from you uh, like from which place within you um, would you say that this driving force to do this work is coming from mm. well let's see so for the people that don't know my work uh that, that I started I started life as a stand-up comic I started my my career as a stand-up comic when I was 12 and then for 20 years or so, toured as a stand-up comic and had a great career with like comedy TV appearances, Comedy Central, different things like that. And and different movies too. 10 Things I Hate About You was a movie I did, not another teen movie. These old things, right? So part of it was, part of my journey was it being totally normal to speak to an audience and be funny and tour as a comedian. And at one point, there was a thing that I noticed, and that's basically this, that I was always thinking, and almost every comic I knew was always thinking, when something happens, I'll be happy. When we get on this late night show, when you get this college, when you get whatever. And I know everyone watching this right now is even thinking now, when something happens, I'll be happy. I'm sure people watching this or when I get enough money or when I get married or when I get divorced or when I get over my addiction, whatever it is, when I get the house, I'll be happy. And I was so lucky because I got to get a lot of the things that I thought would make me happy. And really it didn't, it would just make me be more like, I better not lose this, what's next? And I noticed too, that other comedians that I worked with were always thinking that they would get the thing and they'd be even more stressed. And I really realized this is a lie. And so anyone watching this right now, if you even think if when I get more money, I'll be happy, whatever. I just wanna offer an even higher, shift was happened for me when I shifted out of when something happens, I'll be happy to when I'm happy, things will happen. And by happy, I mean, okay with everything I'm feeling. And my focus got less and less on what's going on on the external and more and more on what I was feeling internal. And this was profound because I started actually becoming happy just because I started becoming happy just because I exist. I started becoming happy because I'm aware or awake or growing or whatever. And I got less and less attached. Still, there was some attachment, but it was less and less to results on the external. And the less attached I was to results where I really didn't care, but stayed in my connection with myself, the more results happened. And they they were great, but they didn't like change anything for me because I was happy with the now more than that. Oh, that I'm doing that giant theater or we made money or the book's a New York Times bestseller or whatever else. And so um, that was kind of my shift where I got more excited about combining comedy and transformation and then speaking speaking comedically to the world. 
And so, you know, people say often that like, I'm what hap would happen if like Jim Carrey and Eckhart Tolle had a kid. And I don't mean it at like their caliber or anything. I just mean like, which I'm just trying to be humble, but like, uh, just like meaning I'm it's comedy and transformation is the type, you know? And so, uh, I find that delivering my revelations and breakthroughs and what the now wants to say with the tools of comedy is really, uh, helpful. And, mm. uh, so we do big theater events, huge shows and stuff. And I, and I, am riffing in the moment, the more I'm not trying to get anything, by the way, which I'm not from the audience, the, the more that this content comes through, I do sometimes up to six day events with nothing planned. And there seems to be an infinite amount of content always coming through. And um, so that's what evolving out loud is, or these events. And one of the principles of evolving out loud comes from when I work with other people, I'm, I do a lot of work with other people, and I shift them. And I've discovered that I, I think it's 100, almost 100% 100 of the time, if you're in a belief about a limitation or stressed about something or sad about something, it's not about that thing. It's about something that that's triggering from before that thing. And so I help people get to the root of what is really there. And then they usually release it. And then it helps their issue with the thing that they were stressed about in the first place. So you might, for instance, be watching this and going through a breakup and think that you're really in this pain because you're losing that person. But the more I do this work, it's not about that. It's like that person feels similar to your mom and now you're feeling abandoned and all of that's there. And so I get them to move from being that little kid that's fighting to not lose mom uh, or whatever the situation is to becoming the now and becoming the parent of that kid. And so, you know, the now is unconditional love. This moment loves you no matter what your story is, no matter what you did, no matter how much money you have, no matter how much money you don't have, this now loves you completely. So when you're trying to get loved by people with egos, it's a lot harder because they have their own crap and they don't have their own approval of themselves. So you're trying to get this feeling from other people. And one of the things I'm really obsessed with is like, feeling the connection with the now and really that's the main source of happiness and then and connection and fulfillment and love and then i watch as the external seems to match that so if i really feel connected to myself first of all it protects me from people that are out of alignment with that it really does the more i'm connected to myself so the for people watching the more you're actually in a place where you're i don't mean love yourself the way that a lot of self-help does but just that you're okay with the now and that you, you're merging with that. You find that a lot of people that are covering up their own unseen energy or whatever, or that have an agenda to hurt you or whatever, they, they kind of run or leave or, or because your light is scary to people that are covering their own or they open up and shift and, and you know, you're, you're lifting things. So um, yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of the journey was like this kind of comedy career and which was weird because I was making fun of the world as a comedian and then I had the shift and if you showed the young me what I was going to become this young me would have been so weirded out like what am I doing like helping people let go of their pain I would have the 24 year old me would have made fun of this me and uh that's such proof that that in itself is such proof that we think that, you know, we learn from so much motivational stuff to have a goal and everything like that. Well, if you asked me at 28 what my biggest goal would have been at 45, it would have been to to do even bigger theaters as a stand-up comic or be, you know, really famous as a comedian. But I really believe in following the now and surrendering your intent, your, your, your goals, because life might be trying to take you to something cooler than what you can see right now. And so when we get our vision boards and we're so certain what we want, you might be you might be actually cutting yourself off from way more amazing. And uh, I find that the now really wants to move you quick into to miracles. And our job is to follow it and not fight it or have our own agenda. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah, totally. And I'm I'm curious also to dive because you're talking a lot about this idea of loving ourselves. And you mentioned that, yeah, and I've heard you sp speak in other contexts about how 
how you believe that we're all here to learn how to love. Um, yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious yeah. to hear you like elaborate on that, but how can that look like in your life to, to learn how to love? Well, have you ever had it where you're really mad at somebody for a long time and then you, f you see their perspective somehow and it creates this awakening and you feel a new level of love for them and forgiveness and it somehow releases what was in your body, this anger. It was almost as if you couldn't get rid of it through hate or anger. You couldn't do anything when you were in resistance to it. But the more you would surrender or the more you would accept, the more you would start to have perspective or you'd see what you were really feeling or whatever. And then it then it brings you to this level of seeing that you couldn't see before. And that seeing to me is loving. By love, I don't mean what movies are throwing at you. I don't mean love songs, love. I just mean seeing. To me, love means seeing. Like really listening in the now. I don't mean like falling in love, like high and addicted. I mean like seeing something changes it. And when we're stuck or we're hurting, it's because we don't see real pain under it. And when you see it, it's seen and it releases itself. So to me, that seeing is love. That's like, I'm accepting what is, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to these patterns in my body. I can, and I, or I'm listening, you know, if, if, if there's a couple, if there's two people as a couple together and you really listen to them and you, even if they're saying something that triggers you or you feel is is even blaming you, you have this ability if you really are untriggered for a minute to be present and hear what they were feeling. And if you keep listening and keep listening, to me, that's like that's an amazing loving thing, especially if they're blaming you, that you're like you're still hearing them. And and you can just in hearing help them like realize something they were stuck in and watch them release their anger and then you can hear them and care about it and at the same time then also after holding that space bring up your perspective and if it's a good relationship they'll hear yours too and both of you will expand and lose some triggered thing from before that because our triggers even in a relationship are not about what we're mad at with each other it's not that it's like when you did this it felt like my dad it's when you did this it felt like mom I felt abandoned like when I was six, right? And these things are in our body as, as things that we don't want to feel anymore. And then we think that's me. I'm just this collection of things I don't want to feel. So you better not do this and you better not do this. When you really bring listening in, you can start to listen even to what's in your body that you're triggered by with them. And then th the more you listen or talk it out, the more it goes. And I believe that this level of listening is just the tipping point. This is just how you undo your own patterns and theirs. But I think it even goes all the way to the world. I believe you through listening can actually heal the entire planet, right? <clears throat> and so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's through listening to what's stuck in you because everything you're triggered by on the external is just the sign of something's unlistened to in your body. And when you hear it and understand it, you'll change what's inside. And I find almost every time the external changes as a match to what you just released inside. So the more you listen, the more you move into the truth of what you are and you start to realize there's some kind of oneness thing here. There's like, you're, you're the whole thing. And there isn't a separation as you do this work. And you don't fight to be understood as much by other people. You just you understand you and keep listening deeper and you start to realize my transformation is available for me. I don't even need anyone on the external to do anything. And you start to become this kind of beam of light more and more and you'll have off days, but the off days are a sign of something you didn't know. So you kind of get excited because you're, you're about to discover a new thing and be even better than yesterday and more open and more listening. And that, seems to bring a light that seems to, I almost feel like the world mirrors that. So when you get even more of this light in the now and you understand more, you start to realize there's more light shining on the world too. And what that means is people with manipulative agendas, control tactics, they want to run the world and do these things or whatever. They can't because they need secrecy and darkness to do it. And we're all awakening and seeing it. So you'll notice when you're watching this, the the same amount of what you see inside and you know there's some stuff you haven't seen yet 
is the same as the world. It's like the world also has the same amount of seen as what you see. And people are waking up to what's going on on the external as a match to what's going on on the internal. Mm, yeah. Something that's coming up for me when I hear you talk about triggers is also this, I don't know, I think it's a fear within me that comes up when it when it comes to this idea of how triggers always is showing us something that has happened to us from the past that it isn't really about this thing that is triggering me about what you're saying right now or whatever um and but i i what comes to me then is this fear of like sort of using triggers in relationships as a way to in some way deny the feeling that's coming up like for mm. example in a relationship like oh yeah but that's feeling doesn't make sense because that doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on right now yeah. that's about your mom or that's about your childhood or whatever you know where I'm no yeah where and I'm... and I'm glad you mentioned that because that doesn't mean overlook the hurt right that 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 your trigger is still it can only be transcended to be by being felt right so it's not like you understand what it is and never mind you know uh you hear it and you still express or you still hear what hurt. And uh, absolutely, you cannot just jump past it. In fact, there's a, a quote that I've heard at different things, but the only way out is through. So we actually have to like sometimes go through days of a thing we know in on the long run is a lie, but it wants to be fully felt and fully experienced and fully understood, you know? And you it won't go away until you're you're and it decides it decides when it's time you don't get to decide when it goes away even so you're just in this kind of listening that's why when you said how are you doing like i'm fine with it but there's an ache in my heart today you know but that's just life right now like that's that needs to be there and there's no fixing of it there's no jump you know the ego can't do anything with it it's just there's a little kid reaching for mom today you know, and I'm just letting this little boy inside reach for mom and have nothing to grab. And then eventually he understands somehow, but it has to be fully felt, you know, but he eventually understands that, you know, there's a new me that I'm the space for him or whatever, but it must be felt all the way through. Mm. No, yeah, exactly. And I think to me, a pattern that has, that has been coming up lately is or something that I've I've seen is a pattern of you know, like there's a part of me that really wants to make sense out of the things that's coming up you know like this pattern of wanting to to know yeah but what is this about like to make sense out of the story yes you know that's what I mean? also a pattern yeah, yeah. right Th that's a pattern in itself right so th the reason is because sometimes when we have a breakthrough uh it, it, some of the first few times we have a breakthrough happens like when you have a thing happening and someone maybe brings to light or you start to realize, oh, this is from something before this. So then you get addicted to, I want to feel that again. So I'm going to start figuring everything out. But sometimes it goes, I just want to purge this and you don't need to figure it out. Or I'll tell you when I want, stop searching for it. So then as you get more advanced, you start stopping your revelations because you want to know what caused it so much. Now that's like you, that's like being like I can't go pee until I know what drink it was, right? But when you have to pee, you have to pee. But like you know, at the very first time, maybe you have to understand what is this? Oh, I drank milk last night from a bottle or whatever. Like, you know, like and and but eventually we start kind of going backwards because we're trying to egoically figure out as a way to not listen. It's almost like oh, this this hurts. What is this from? Versus listening. Now I have a five-year-old daughter. Wouldn't it be weird if my daughter was telling me she's hurting and instead of me hearing her and just listening to her, even if it doesn't fully make sense, just staying with her instead of that, I'm like, let's figure it out. Let's do something about it. Let's make sense out of it. Where did it come from? Where'd you come from? No, she needs me to hear her. One of the biggest shifts we're going to have in 2023 is moving from needing to express everything you know there's a major fight for freedom of speech which i'm a huge fan of but an even higher level is freedom to hear like we're going to spend a lot of 2023 listening listening to each other listening to our inner child listening to god and so instead of figuring out and not listening 
we're going to have to just listen even when it hurts and we have no idea. And we can't have a rush to a solution to get rid of the pain. It, it needs you to feel it all the way. Mm, yeah. You know? <sighs> feel it all the way. Yeah, and that's, I, that's interesting. I noticed, like, in me, this, how I can sometimes get stuck in this fear of, like, when I'm in the process of feeling whatever is coming up, I notice a pattern also of of fear of fear of always staying there like how it won't come to an end like okay now mm. I'm in this emotion it will always be like this but then once I'm out of it it's so beautiful because it's such a reminder of how like what you mentioned it when it's yeah. done it's done I don't have to force it because it the pattern will know when it's cried out when it's felt when it's seen <laughs> yes oh. and even that's a pattern like it wants you to see that that it will always be here is yeah. here it wants you to even look at that mm. right last night i was doing a call on my my membership site and a woman was saying she was feeling these things and she's scared you know she keeps starting to feel this hate towards the pattern and i said so life's trying to get you to see there's hate in your body so that you can bring a light to the hate and she said something like I just know that if I feel hate, I feel guilty about it. And I go, so life's trying to show you there's guilt in there, right? And so it's trying to, sh it's not showing you this so you stop. It's showing you this so you see that patterns there too, right? And if you keep listening, even the pattern of, uh, I'm worried this will stay there forever, you know, it goes, I need you to listen to it, even if that's the case. Like at one point you start listening and going, no matter what, merge, I want to merge with my soul, no matter what. And even if I have to, for the rest of my life, listen to this pattern forever, I will. Usually it'll go by really quick if you're like that, yeah. you know, but you can't do it. So it goes by because then it's you trying to control it. So you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it goes, I want you to show me, you'll listen to that because even that belief is a passing belief. Hmm. right and it yeah. can't get rid of the first belief until you also alchemize the belief that that it would be not allowed for it to be there forever you know hmm. yeah what if that's okay even that hmm. it's it's interesting when i heard you talk about this woman on on your call uh whom who talked about yeah this hate that came up towards the pattern um, and I think that's something that many people struggle with to find to find acceptance towards the parts of ourselves or the patterns that's coming up that might feel shameful or whatever. Um, do you have any perspectives on yes. that? Like, I don't want to say how, but but anyways, how how do we learn to love the parts of ourselves yeah. that we might be ashamed well, of? Well, here's a really good way to know what the patterns are that are in your body they're the patterns you don't want to feel. In other words, like that you don't want to feel in a current situation. So for instance, let's say if you're like, I want to get into this relationship, but I don't want to make a mistake or I don't want to regret it. Okay. If you're saying, I don't want to regret something or I want to get out of this relationship, but I don't want to regret it. You only have that fear because you have regret still stored inside of your body from something before this. So whatever you're worried you're going to feel, right? I'm worried I'll feel guilt. I'm worried I'll feel shame. That's because there's shame already inside of your body. So when you feel the shame that's already inside of your body, which you usually do by moving towards a higher you that flushes the shame out. Do you get what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Like in other words, sometimes, so I, I can think of someone I know that she wanted to leave her parents' house, but she was worried that she would feel guilty, like she's abandoning them, right? And I said, that's the reason you have to leave so that this guilt that's in your body can leave. In other words, if you stay in there, the guilt is running everything you do. It's in charge. You're you're showing the guilt. It's your boss by letting it be like, oh, you're going to feel guilt. And then you cater to it and go back in versus you get present and let it come up. So when we do as there's a speaker named Bashar that I love that talks about following your highest excitement. And, and I also would call it your truest expansion or, you know, the, the, the highest version of you and the truest version of you, uh, will not be able to contain all that shame and guilt because you're, you're in the real you and it's you merged with source. So the more you follow the true callings in your body and the more you don't yeah, but them with, 
with, but I'd feel shame or guilt or abandonment or chaos or whatever. The more that those things, you, they start to realize they don't have any control over you. So they have to leave. And you'll just be in this higher you and you might feel an ache in your heart and you'll just be crying. Like this morning, I felt an ache in my heart, talked to the team about it, talked to a couple of my teammates about it. And I was crying, you know, and just missed my mom who passed away five years ago and just started talking about her and bawling. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so when you have this thing where the pain's there and the pain's there and, and that's energy that's not yours, that's trying to leave. You know, and if you don't fix it or try to get to the other side of it or judge it or, or, or recoil and go back into the old pattern that stopped it from coming up, uh, it'll eventually just fall out of you. You'll just hear a song hit you a certain way and you'll be, you'll be crying. And mm. then you're a higher version of yourself that you've never seen before. Mm. And you, the, the higher, everything that's cried out is replaced by more God. So when you have a pattern fall out, you get even more light and more freedom and more higher excitement and more permission and more million dollar ideas or whatever. And, and you become more and more of a light just in frequency on the planet, not even based on what you do. If you listen to David Hawkins, he talks about there's different frequencies that people emit, like that their numbers from zero to a thousand, you know, you, I'm on this planet to to change the world by upping my number much more than I am by selling books. You know what I mean? I'm much more excited about the frequency that I'm emitting in the now more than how many views do I get, Right. In fact, that's definitely the prime goal. It's like, what's the ultimate version of myself? And so that's kind of what I'm doing. It's like literally going through the shifts and then bringing it to the world. But the shifts and what I'm becoming are more exciting to me than what I'm sharing. Does that make mm, sense? Yeah, definitely. And I'm curious to hear, because you talked about this idea of following the highest, the highest calling, the, the, the truest expansion. And Ah, I think that's an interesting theme. Like how how do we know if we're following the highest calling or just sort yes. of settling for something that's fearful or yeah, how do we make that distinction? So a way that I've done this for a while is kind of shown this kind of thing that that might be helpful. First of all, with every decision I make, the first question you should ask yourself is, does this feel like it would expand me or contract me? Okay. So for instance, let's say we're talking about getting into a relationship. The ego has a certain type of person that it wants and the soul has a very different type of person, okay? So if the ego still has patterns, let's say the ego had, let's say your ego, you had a dad that abandoned you a bunch, okay? The ego will be like, I wanna fix that. So what do I do? I need to find a guy who's like dad who would abandon me and try to change him. That's how the ego works, right? It goes, who would abandon me? Okay, I'm going to change that. The soul would just go, who will be there with me, right? But then the ego has nothing to fix. So the ego, that's kind of the purpose of the ego. It almost wants to create the fix to the childhood issues that happen. And that's why also the ego often sabotages things, okay? And then fixes the things that it sabotaged, right? So that's how the ego works. It makes giant screw ups, and then it fixes those things. So you have to start getting good at asking yourself with every decision that you make, with every decision that you make, whether it's going on a walk, whether it's having water, whether it's eating certain ways or whatever, do I feel expanded or contracted? So here's an example. Let's say you're working at a job that you, is, you, you're mediocre about. And let's say in the middle of it, you have this calling where you just hear this calling that goes, what if we left this job right now? right? There's this like open-ended kind of portal to a new world in that feeling, right? And I, it always, it, it can't tell you why you should because you've never done it. So there's this like opening that's miraculous and magic. Now, if you follow that and say yes, without seeing what'll happen, you're entering a new world. And the you that was trying to protect yourself would have to collapse because you're following a higher you. But usually when those decisions come up, before you say yes to it, it's met with an egoic, we better not. So you'll be like, what if we what if we leave this company or ask this person out or write a book or fly to Italy right now, whatever. Whenever you have this first thing, 
The second thing, the old you, the small you, comes up with all these stupid reasons why you shouldn't. And it's usually, they're really weak reasons, right? So the first you will be like, what if we leave this company? And the second voice is like, well, yeah, then we can't go to that that restaurant cheesecake factory party next week or whatever. And then it's like, it, this voice is like, I want you to follow me even with no evidence of it, of why, because then that's faith. You'll actually be moving based on feeling and not evidence, right? And this, the second voice is like, yeah, but they have those Thai lettuce wraps and I want to eat that. And and this first voice is this like expansion. And this is like, yeah, but, and I always give this example, but if anyone watching has ever stayed in a relationship with someone that you don't want to be with, because you know, like eventually you were going to go camping, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like people be like, I hate this person, but I already bought a tent. So I guess I'll hate him for the next month and then I'll hate him in the woods. Like you don't have to do that, right? But when you follow this higher you, the yeah, but dies and you kind of go off into this adventurous you that is basically proving to yourself based on how you move that you're worth more, that your time's worth more, that you're valuable, that you are good at saying no to things that are not a 10 10 10 in your heart. So there's this higher you that's like, trying to guide yourself into a world of miracles and freedom and worthiness. And then you have a world of unworthiness that you learned with your parents that's trying to stay alive too. So you're you're moving into expansion or contraction. And a lot of people choose contraction and then their life is just Groundhog Day. It's just the same thing over and over and over again. It's just this sad loop of just like, it's fine, that's what they want and I'm not judging it. But like, man... There's this, the second you follow the first time and then you get all these miracles, you start to get good at following that higher thing. And it takes you to crazy joy and crazy freedom and higher levels of health and all kinds of stuff. And you end up spitting out all these things that you're not. And, you know, a great example would be if I ask anyone watching on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, what's meditation for you? Or what's walking around in the woods or just going on a walk without your phone? Many people say 10 there. If I say what's scrolling through Instagram for you all day, let's say you scrolled through Instagram for an average of three, four hours a day. Most people would say that's a one or a two. Yet people spend way more time on Instagram than meditating, right? So people are used to living contracted and the energy in your body is stuck based on how you're moving, right? So when you keep living in the old habit, right? You you, you keep, you're being unable to purge your ego because you keep moving from the ego. And if you follow the higher you and move more into a oneness place, it starts to purge the ego but in your moves, you're showing the universe that you're worthy of so much and you're you're free and you're joyful. And you weirdly in this place have this paradox of you want less, you don't need as much, you're not addicted as much, and way more is coming your way. Like you're in this place where you're fine no matter what, you don't need a relationship, you don't need whatever, but you're also like, really attractive because you don't, you're not needy, you're in your power, you're guided, you know what I'm saying? So learning to find what the higher you wants is really, and then not the egoic higher you. Some people think, I, I hear a lot of people, they make what they think is their 10, but it's their ego's 10, right? And so they'll be like, I, it, that's like thinking I want to go win in gambling a bunch, right? Like I, and it's like, maybe your highest would be to leave the casino though. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. like there's a, there's a highest that's trying to take you to a world that you do not understand that your mind is not in yet. And when you leap and you say yes to it, it's pretty trippy how 100% of the time life becomes more miraculous. You become more abundant. You make more money. You, you end up much freer. You're in better relationships. It's almost like you shifted the entire world with that move too. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Can it can it also be like the other way around that we get this intense first feeling of a no in our body? Like it's a no. Oh yeah. But then the mind can, comes up yeah. with like story of like, yeah, but I should because that's and you know, is that a case? It as well? absolutely can yes. It can be a absolute highest excitement to say no to something. So here's an example. Uh, my social media, all of it is run by my team. I cannot get on anything. 
right? So I, cause, cause my soul goes, it's a no to be flipping through Twitter or whatever, you know, but sometimes my ego wants to. So I literally have to hand my teammates my password and go change it. Let me go 90 days without it. Right. And right away there's this liberate, like that egoic, what is everyone talking about on social media is suddenly replaced by God. And I can hear God, not everyone's gossip. You want God, not gossip. I didn't mean to make a sound bite there, but that was pretty cool. And so- <laughs> So for me, some actually most of the things in my life now that are my highest things are saying no, right? Like really having the courage to say no to things that the ego goes, I should be a part of that. One thing that I've discovered, when you say, when you say no to something and you have that little fear of missing out, you should say yes or whatever. The thing you think you're missing out on isn't as good as you think, you know? Should I get back with that person in the relationship? You're tricking your, your mind is in some bizarre fantasy and forgets what it really is like. And if you're like, if I do this, then I'm going to miss out on that party. The party's not as good as your mind is making it. Right? right. And so learning to say no for people in the spiritual world is like the best, highest excitement because, because the, here's why the world itself is unbelievably heavy. And you are becoming lighter. And a lot of people in the spiritual world are trying to pull up the rest of the world, but instead just let go of it and you free yourself and become a butterfly and stop trying to convince every caterpillar about anything because you free is worth more and we'll change the world. You will feel the world change around your highest. So yes, so saying no to a relationship that's a nine, but not a 10. You know what I mean? Saying no to hanging out with someone. I always give this example and I use this all the time. Have you ever had plans with someone and then you hope that they cancel? If you have that, that's your soul saying cancel. But we have this egoic people pleaser that we don't want to let them down. So we hope they do it. But they're probably doing the same damn thing with you. So they're hoping you cancel and no one cancels. And now we're at dinner with people we don't want to be with, right? But if you want them to cancel, that's a higher you going, let go of it, right? So I'm learning to say no more and more and more and more and more. And it turns out that's the next step for my miracles is like to say no. So yes, it's a total highest to say no, because mm. whatever you say no to, there's a great quote that my friend said to me when I was doing this experiment. When you say no to something, you're only stressed because your mind can actually measure what you will lose, but it can't see what you'll gain. So when you let go of something, the mind does not see what it'll be replaced with. You just see what you're losing, but it's always replaced with better. So one, your mind tricks you into thinking what you're missing out on is better, but two, what you're actually missing out on by saying yes to this crap that you don't want what you're actually missing out on is way better than your mind understands. So your connection to source is actually where all the miracles are and the craziness is. And your mind forgets about that. It's just scared if it misses out on some weak party, you know, mm. or something. Yeah. And it's like, you don't want to go there. Uh, mm. You know? And it's so liberating to follow the highest, even if it's a no, if it's a yes, whatever it is. And I, I think I want to I want to take us back to because I have something in my mind that I don't want to like leave. Um, sure. We, we were talking about triggers and triggers within relationships, um, and something that came up within me was that that I would like to talk to you about this thing when we're in an intimate relationship, or it doesn't even have to be an intimate relationship, just a relationship with someone that we're close to, um, and something within yeah within me rise, rises comes up a pattern comes up a trigger um and then I express that trigger for the person that I'm with and in a relationship with um and then that trigger itself awakens a trigger within the other person and now uh -huh. we're two triggered people trying to hold yes. space for ourselves and the other person yes. and you know so when so because you were talking about this idea of holding space and I think that's mm -hmm. so beautiful and I also find it challenging in these moments when we're both tr triggered and we're triggered at each other's triggers you know what I mean yes completely mm. so imagine that I find as as you keep going there's 
farther and farther stages at how you handle your own trigger, right? So imagine one level is they don't even know it's a trigger. They just think it's the other person, right? That's the first level. Just you did that to me. It makes me so mad. You're the, you're the asshole, right? That's the first level. <laughs> the, sec the, the second level is where you start to understand there's a trigger. So you could be with a partner and say something like, it really triggered me when you did that. Now I know that's something before, but I really wish you hadn't done that. And you're still kind of saying they shouldn't have, right? Even though you're owning it's yours, but you're not all the way in there, right? I find for me, as you keep going, and trust me, there's still some times I'm in too, but you can also start to be like, literally, I'm triggered that you did this, but like, that's only mine. Okay, that's my thing with my whatever. And you also will have partners that are at, what level are they at, right? Are they at a, are they able to hold a present space where even though you're both triggered, you're each listening to your own trigger, like I, I, I went through years of understanding triggers, but believing the only way this trigger is understood is when my partner understands it. Right. And so I still need them to get me while I'm in a triggered state. And I, and I'm now even at 45 going, that's not true. Like I'm having these long walks and meditations every day. I'm really starting to just directly get connected with what's going on in my body. Right. And the more you do that, the more and the more you'll find people that have that match, because as you're if you're in three, you have a really like people that are in two that are just kind of blaming you, right, or whatever, or one, they they don't work because you're it, it just it's weak for you. It's not expansive for you. And they can do that and everything, but they're not owning their part of it. So, you know, so one thing is there's even different levels of seeing your triggers right? I mean, literally every morning, I'm on an hour to two hour walk every morning. So I'm just sitting here and walking in silence and just hearing everything that's here. And then my teammates get together and we do some, this visioning exercise that I do called Calego. And we're doing these exercises and then we're all crying. Like we're all talking and crying. And I really am in touch with what the core of my triggers are. And then I can go into the day much less likely, not perfect, but much less likely to get into an argument or feeling need to be seen, right? So imagine that there's even as you keep going in the spiritual world, you you can even get more and more in touch with, so someone can trigger you and you could just go straight to what this is. You don't even have to tell them about it, right? Or you could get to a place where you heal it and then say something. Or you can say it and they're in a space if they can hear it, I was at one point where I felt like I could be in a space to hear it if it was presented not as full blame. I couldn't if it was full blame. But when someone would tell me their thing and I would want to hear it and go deeper with it and show them what it was, and then I would want them to do that for me. But that wasn't fair of me to expect that too, right? And so, so I find that this is why I think it's so important to really make your prime relationship with the now and then have a relationship that's a mirror of that versus a relationship is bigger to me than myself. And in the world, there's a lot of movies and songs that really emphasize being in a relationship. And that's beautiful. I have no problem with people being in a relationship. But we really need to give just as much emphasis to it's fine to be alone. And it's fine to be alone. Not one day I'll be in a relationship, but that you're fully alone with God and that you are all the way there. And that that's enough and you can have a relationship, but you're not constantly thinking this isn't enough and I need to be in one eventually. That that paradigm is going to die soon. And the more you're with the now, the more it just starts pulling up triggers on its own and you just start crying and you don't know why. And the triggers are just not there. And you just become fine with the now versus needing to be seen all the time by your partner. And it's weird because after a while, when you don't need to be seen by your partner, you start to go, why be in a relationship like that? The old, the old paradigm of relationships are so needy and codependent. And the way movies present them is really fine, but also not the truth. And these people in the movies, they break up and they're in agony without the person. That's not love. That's attachment. That's control. 
you're sad that your partner's with someone else now, that's control. It is like, and that's what I'm saying is triggering to people, by the way, but like that is control. You're, you're mad that the person you broke up with is now dating someone else. You're a control freak <laughs> and it's just normalized in our world. Mm, you know, Yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk about it. And and what comes up for me also now shifting into a whole different kind of relationship, um, because I heard you mention your daughter before in the beginning of this conversation. And I would love to hear you share about like, yeah, what what's something that your daughter has taught you about relationships? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if FaceTime I can FaceTime her. <laughs> I'm gonna FaceTime her. I don't know if this is coming oh, through, but this is her. She's so sweet. She took a picture mm. last night on my phone. She's the wow. sweetest. How old is she? She's five and a half. Mm. Mm. She'll be six in July, and she's a miracle. Just an age angel in my life. Mm. My best friend. She's all over. Mm, yeah, I can tell. You know? mm. Yeah, she's so she's so sweet, and one of the benefits, not the not that the pandemic is a good thing, although it did awaken a lot of people, but one of the benefits of it was it really forced me to be home. And, you know, I was a really touring speaker before that. And then all this stuff happened and I had to become present and I became a much better father because of it. So like, I'm very grateful for it. Cause I'm so glad she has a dad that's actually in the work of both being grateful for my dad, but also transcending his patterns. So I'm not being him to her, <laughs> you know, and, or even subtle versions of that, like trying really hard to like really see where I felt unseen with him and then transcending that and being with her. What was your question about her? Yeah. My question I was, make sure I yeah, my question was if you would like to share like some of the things or maybe the th most important thing that, that she has taught you something expansive that has mm. happened with you through the relationship God. with her. I mean, there is, there's so many things. I have so many stories that have brought me to tears or, or, you know, different things. And first of all, like this is, this is kind of basic stuff, but there's so many things that when I was a kid, my parents did with me, but I realized what they were doing were what they wanted to do. A lot, you know, like we're going to watch dad's movie now. We're going to, you know, whatever. And I almost started that too. Like, you know, these are the things I want to do. And I want her to hear this music that my parents showed me that I like. And like that, I that still happens. That's not bad or anything like that. But like really just being in celebration of what watching what she wants to do. And really following it, being collaborative, like still there's times where I want to go to a restaurant that I like or whatever, but at the same time, like really hearing her because she's this light that's birthing through. I, I am too, but I got a collection of crap in here. There's a lot of patterns in here, you know, and um, really learning to be present, but not forcing presence because I felt when I was a kid, my dad kind of spaced out a little bit a lot actually. And I, for a while, didn't want to be that. So I was like being the opposite where I'm like trying to be present and just force myself to just pay attention to everything. And that didn't work either because it was out of my resistance to my dad. So I had to do a lot of, it caused me to forgive and heal and understand my dad more and cry a lot of that out where I, I'm allowed to not I'm allowed to not have to be present every second with force. And that seems to make me just choose to be more present. Um, but she's also just like so funny and she's a singer and I don't know. I have these little moments of times where I remember just, I remember even a moment when she was in some kind of pain. I remember her being like, one and crawling around the bed and being in some kind of pain. I remember just thinking, what's it like to be one in a world you have no idea what the hell anything is. And these two giant people are taking care of you and you're feeling whatever gas in your stomach and you can't communicate it. Mm -hmm. And I just started crying, like feeling for her and like, just 
feeling, you know, this kind of cliche thing that dads say all the time and parents say, but like really finding a love that like, you know, you would die for, you would do anything for. She's such a reason for what I do. Like, you know, it's not to impress her one day. It's to, it's to change the world because she's in it. Um, you know, like, I, I mean, if anything, it drives me much more to be in my purpose. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I have so many stories that are all clogged. I can't even think of a specific, mm. so specific one, but mm. yeah. I think it's Sorry. beautiful what you're sharing. It really touches me. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. So thank you for sharing. No no need for yeah. any more stories. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's her. Like she's that's just so the sweetest beautiful. girl. And oh. it's it's yeah, it's an amazing experience. Mm. It's an it's so, it's I'll say this. You know, people say to me, I wow, you did that theater or that show or the whatever. I'll tell you, man, for me having a kid, like it beats all of it. Those were amazing experiences there's this is just like it's i heard another speaker saying this the other day but it's so true and i'll just reiterate it that you know they there's studies that show that couples that don't have kids they're happier but the couples that do are more fulfilled and find a deeper sense of purpose mm. i mean you know you really don't you really don't understand that you have a kid how much you don't just get to you know, just go to a thing whenever you want, or it's always, th there's a kid always there. And there, that kid has needs that need to be met always. And people that say they have a dog need to go away. That's not the same. Like, oh, I get it. I have a dog. It's not the same. You, you, oh, you take your dog for a walk for an hour every once in a while and it poops and that's it. No, this is like teaching them to, to read or yesterday, she asked me to teach her how to tie a shoe and I was so excited, you know, and just, we're sitting there doing this thing. And I, I mean, it's, there's not, there's, you're so excited when she achieves something or gets something or does something. She lost her tooth the other day at a restaurant and like went table to table to tell everyone there that mm. she lost her tooth. It was so cute. <laughs> and she was so excited for the tooth fairy and everything. And it's just like, that level of joy is all that I care about. Like, you know. Mm. Mm, it's so beautiful to to listen to you and to watch you while you talk about her because it's also like, I can, I can feel you through the screen. It's beautiful. I could feel like a sense of a shift in energy, really feeling the love that's coming mm. through when you talk about her. <laughs> it's beautiful. And um, you really, you start, mm. I'll tell you one thing you go through a lot that's really interesting for me is sorting through what I need to do for her or what God's trying to get me to do and let go of what I thought I needed to do for her because what it's taking me to might be better than what I was going to do. Like really deciphering between, you know, you do what she needs, but then there's a level where you're doing it because you think you have to. And then there's like a universe going, I need you to let go of that for a second. So you're trying to figure out what you get what I'm saying. Like there's a thing that the universe wants me to become for a much bigger reason for her. Right. So you have to like decipher and because otherwise you start giving up yourself for them out of almost fear or something like that. And then you teach them to do that. Right. They start learning, give up yourself for your kids. And it's like you you're I'm there for her 24 seven, but at the same time, like, you got to still become you don't start to go. I have kids. I'm going to stop my dreams. I'm going to stop my purpose. I'm going to cut off everything. Cause you just tell them that's life. And then they learn life is don't follow your heart. Cause they watched your parents do that. So I find having a, a kid is all the more reason to live in my truth. Mm. Cause it, it would, she won't, if I don't, I mean, she might, but it's normalized mm. for her to do that. You know, mm. it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I noticed the time is running very fast this hour. Um, and I would love so to fun. because, uh, yeah, if if we do have a few more minutes, I would love because we have some questions from the listeners. Is that okay for you to to sure. just take like 10 more minutes to, to, to oh, go Oh, were we like that? on live? Like there are people watching? No, like... no, no, no. 
No, I but okay. I do have some questions from the listeners. Um, oh, cool! That they have sent in in yeah to this conversation. Oh, I get it. Awesome. Mm, yeah. Awesome. So, so one of the questions that I've gotten or that we have gotten um, to you is what are some of the fears that you have had to overcome in order to live the life that you're living today and doing the work that you're doing in the world? Oof, my God, so many, so many. Well, one that's, I guess, obvious is to my whole life has been different stages of surrendering what people think about me, you know, like. I went through so many different stages. I'm in I'm in high school and I'm doing comedy. And then I I book a movie, 10 Things I Hate About You, and I moved to LA. And I got people in Seattle that are annoyed at me. Kyle's gone all Hollywood now. And all these people that, you know, they're just mad at me because I'm not there anymore. And that transcends over and over and over again to the, some of the closest people in my life or me having to really make high level decisions that might not make sense to anybody. But the universe is asking me to prove to it that I trust it more than because this calling that's coming through has got everything for me. And it's it's batting a thousand at being right. And and you sometimes it'll be like you have to let go of your connection to that person because they're not going to get this. Or you're going to have people talk crap about you or attack you or, or whatever. Like you, you're to some people, you're a crazy cult leader. If you're just this positive person or you're just saying these things and they don't believe in that, you know, that's fine, but not everyone's seeking that highest thing and understands this. So you just get used to that. And then weirdly, the more you're fine with it, the more it goes away, the more you're like dealing with it. Like, okay, I hope they don't say this. The more it seems to show up. Right. And then you start to be even more connected to your light in that journey. But I went through that shift huge when I let go of stand-up comedy to do this and watched as I had a lot of different comedians give me a lot of crap and, you know, whatever they were. And I get it. Like, I understand that they felt that, you know, like what I was saying is crazy and all the stuff. And, and it was like the beginning of what has been my shift for the last 13 years now. And it like, it wasn't just some fluke thing here. I am 13 years later, still doing this. And now it's even more telling me, like I hear the universe more and more telling me that the shifts that it has for me, this is going to be crazy, but are more and more inward now. In other words, it's giving me these shifts and it's not wanting me to just suddenly make content out of it. Cause it's like, I'm trying to shift you. And every time I tell you the idea, you just pivot to everyone else and tell them the revelation. And so it's not about you and me. It's about you uh, getting an audience or whatever. So like, I have to surrender that a little more. And I've, I've shifted things in my membership site, like that I'm less and less talking about my revelations and becoming more and more of a space for what their questions are, because it's just, I find that I can transcend stuff when I'm just listening to it. So, so there's a lot of like changing worlds in this life, you know, and letting go of what was once your dream career and letting go of all the people that think you should still be over there. And you just start to replace what their opinions are with more and more God. And you just start really feeling this power along with this ache in your heart that they say that, and then that ache goes away and the power gets bigger, <laughs> mm, the now yeah. power, you know? So, mm. so I would say that's a big, that's a big fear that my whole life I've had to transcend all the way down to family members and people, you know, and, and different things and going through so many different things. So, uh, you know, but in the long run, it all evens out in the end. You know, I really believe that there's like a, there's going to be a moment like when we all die, it's like we were all in a movie and we're backstage now, like we we're playing characters and now we're, that was funny. Remember when you were my enemy for my whole life? Like that was good. You played a good bad guy <laughs> or you played, you know, like it won't matter. None of this matters, you know? Mm, and now we're here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I do have a few other questions here from the listeners. Sure. One is, um, yeah, one well, was talking about humor. In what way has humor been part of your own expansion? What way has humor? I mean, it's the whole, first of all, I think most of us take ourselves way too seriously. And we think that we're mortal beings. 
And I believe you're immortal, meaning you're you're infinite forever. And it's not that big a deal. Like you don't have to take it seriously. In other words, you're all that is, you're the universe. The highest you is all that is, is oneness, is God. You're just love and who cares? So when you could go to like this combination of like, you can also make fun of it and it's hilarious and our egos are so funny and everything. It makes it really easy for, yeah, because you can also be, laughter is another type of release. And I, and I've gone through many, many, many hard things. And I know we all have. And sometimes it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> like, you'll be like, the world is so ridiculous. Like the things going on in the world right now are so bizarre. And sometimes you have to just laugh at what the hell is going on everywhere. Like, and what the hell's going on in me? And what is this ego that keeps caring about that or whatever? So absolutely. I think that the self-help world has served such a great purpose, but also has been very serious and very, mm, not now, Kyle, this is, we, we're very, we're releasing and they think it's only serious and I'm being funny. And I'm like, this is also releasing like, you know, and um, you know, I think that there's something in the self-help world that's, I always call the long stare, you know, the people that are like, mm, they, you know, and they, they got the beads all over and they've changed their name to different types of light things. And, and, you know, and they're kind of wanting you to more see how spiritual they are, but <laughs> they're not, you know, like they're, it, that's funny to me. And yeah. I did a sketch this summer with a bunch of my teammates um, and, and, amazing people in my life called when everything's a sign. And I think it's so funny when we make everything a sign, right? Like, but when we take it too far, like we don't even have our own intuition anymore. Like if a, if a person's like, what should I name my kid? Oh, glass of water, I guess. Cause this was here. That's a sign. This is here. I should name my kid <laughs> glass of water now. And like, you're just like, that's a sign. That street signs a sign. That's God telling me this mercury retrograde. And you start having a you that has decisions and choices because you think everything else is just God telling you what to do. <clears throat> That's hilarious to me. Like, it's so funny. Like mm -hmm. these people that are like, mm, I'm downloading this thing and they do this all the time. Like they're pulling ideas out. Mm, thank you. Mm. It's just like, you're also spiritual. Like your, your intuition, your ideas are also spiritual. It's not just this God over here telling you everything you should do via street signs and numbers on your clock. It's everything, exactly. yeah. you know, mm, beautiful. So it's worth making fun of also. Um, and then I guess we would take the last question from the listeners. Um, how do I get rid of the fear of losing myself to negative and fearful emotions? Yeah. This will sound like the opposite and make no sense, but by loving the fear. In other words, you cannot get rid of fear by getting rid of fear. You'll never do that. The fear exists in your body. And the more you resist it, the more you're saying this fear is bigger than me. So when you're fighting it, you're telling it you're scared of it. But if you become the now and you say, first of all, you're allowed to have fear in your body, right? And you get really present and you just let it be there. And it might take a couple of days, but you start to just be like, the fear is allowed to be here. I love it. I'm so thankful for it. And the fear, she, the person said, I don't know if she or he, but they said, what was it? Uh, a fear of losing yourself? Yeah, losing myself to negative and fearful emotions. Okay. So first of all, this, this is a great question for all of the egos that, that have these very specific things that you can't do. Let me ask you this. How do you know when you found yourself? Like, what does that mean? Right? I'm scared I'll lose myself. So how do I keep myself found? What does that mean? You get what I mean? Like, we usually have no measurable thing to get the thing we want anyway. Like when someone says, I'm worried I won't be enough. I always say to them, okay, how do you know when you are enough? And there's no answer. The ego is very vague, right? So <clears throat> I would say this to the person that asked, say this to the pattern. You're allowed to lose yourself in my body. Meaning, what does that even mean? Let the pattern know that it's loved even if it loses itself because there's a pattern under that there's a belief that in your childhood you created that if you lose yourself something happens to you so you better stay found otherwise you get hit or abandoned or yelled at or whatever 
So if you start to become the now and say, you're allowed to lose yourself, it'll just collapse, but then the fear goes away too, right? It'll, it'll go away because you're, there's no such thing as losing yourself. You're just the now, mm. right? There's no way to measure that you're lost or found. Those are just not even a thing. Lost and found. Right. <laughs> right. You're just mm. lost and found. Yeah. Yeah. That's and beautiful. so, and, and the idea also in that sentence was two negative energies or, or what was the negative? And, what was it? Negative, negative and fearful emotions. Yeah. Negative and fearful emotions. So you just bring every negative and fearful emotion up and become a space for it. I, it's all I do all day. You're allowed to feel off. You're allowed to feel scared. You're allowed to feel abandoned. You're allowed to feel whatever. So those, those things just need to know they're allowed. That's, mm. that's where you change everything because you're not scared of it when you allow it mm. and it can walk, dance around your body. It'll run around and be all freaked out or whatever. And you're just here letting it like you're a big swimming pool and it's just swimming in you and eventually it'll leave. Right. Mm. What a relief. Mm. Yeah. Allowing. And that's a great example of how you have to love it, see it and love it. And it'll leave. Mm. It'll never leave from force. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you, Kyle, for this one and a half almost hour. It's been so beautiful and time has just flied. <laughs> it's been so quick. Um, so thankful. It's been my absolute pleasure. How can uh, the listeners get in touch with you or yeah, see your content, learn more from you if they want to the, dive deeper? The best thing, thank you for that. Well, first of all, we have a YouTube channel, of course. There's there's Kyle Cease, but the best thing that we have is a thing we have called the Absolutely Everything Pass. It's my membership site. It has thousands of people on it. It's so awesome. It's literally me doing like a guided meditation live every Sunday. Then on Monday, we do this thing called It's Totally Possible where people come on and they riff all these things that are possible. And then that changes their mindset. On Wednesday, I do this Q&A and shift people. Then we have a guy that does breath work on Thursday. And then we have a thing called hot seat where I bring people on and shift them. And then we also have a thousand hours of backlog content and courses that we used to sell for thousands of dollars. And uh, the whole thing is usually the public pays $79 a month. Uh, these are American dollars. I know you're in different countries and stuff, but now it's $299 for one year if they type in the passcode water. And it will pay for itself over and over and over again because you're moving to higher frequencies. Like if this call did anything for you, wait till you just immerse yourself in this. So the Absolutely Everything Pass, that's on absolutelyeverything.tv is by far the best way to get into all the all the work we're doing. And then there's also YouTube if you want to see, there's probably 500 videos on there too. So, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's what you saw. and and. Yeah, I love doing this. It's so fun. And then mm. I have a book out. I have two books out. The one I love the most is The Illusion of Money, which is why chasing money is stopping you from receiving it. And uh, yeah, mm. that's it. There's that's a lot beautiful. of other things. But that's that's beautiful. Good stuff. Yeah, that's beautiful. And uh, Kyle, if you were to reach the whole world, like you would really get 30 seconds and your voice would reach everyone out there, what would you want to say or even do with them? For 30 I seconds. would say every I would say everything's fine. Just know that. Move as if everything's fine. The big question we ask on the absolutely everything pass a lot is if everything was fine, if always were fine, what would you do? Right? So when people are they want to leave a job and they're scared, I'm scared I'd lose my money. If that was fine if you lost your money, what would you do? Right? If I let go, my mom might be upset. If it was fine that your mom's upset, what would you do? And this is like paradigm busting, right? So I get everyone to get everything's fine. And then they would move from their heart versus being constantly scared that they'll offend everyone else. And then kind of trapping each other in the small, weak thing that, that doesn't matter. You're, you're perfect. Everything's fine. Just stay, stay connected. Watch you're forced into evolving now. So welcome to freedom. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. it's on a stand. But, yeah. yeah. Boom. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, it's been so beautiful. Thank you for your time, Kyle, and your wisdom and everything that you're doing. It's uh, oh, thank you. You were so great. 
you were so great at interviewing your, you so have actually been clearly shifting and you understand what I'm talking about. Mm. And you were so wonderful as, as an interviewer and, and a person in a space that listens. So congrats on this podcast. I'm honored to be with you tonight. And I hope you get so many new subscribers from this and people see what a light you are on our planet. I'm honored mm. to be working with you. Thank you for tuning in with us today, for sharing this space with us and for having the courage to show up for you becoming the highest version of you. I am so curious to hear your reflections, insights and maybe even triggers. What came alive within you while listening to this conversation? My name is Madeleine Mofjad and I invite you to connect with me on Instagram at Mofjad or you can find me through the links in the description to this episode. I would love for this conversation to keep flowing. Again, thank you for being here in this space with us.